Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you are having a great day. So in this video today, we're going to be sand casting a die for a tubing bender. So it's a little, a little different, but anyways, hopefully you'll enjoy it. I don't want to waste your time here. Let's get started. Okay, so you're getting it set up, but first tell them what we're doing and, and why. See this thing? It's a die for my JG square bender. I need one a different size. I can't wait three or four weeks. You know, COVID's got everything on delay, so I'm gonna make a quick one just to use in there for a couple bins. I need 20 degrees probably out of some inch and a quarter tube. 049 wall, so it's very thin. The aluminum will be fine for what I'm doing. Now they're typically steel, but you can bend thick wall with that. Okay, you may be wondering though, what is sand casting and how do you do it? He knows how to do it from kind of a unique source. I'm gonna have him tell you about that too. Okay, so first of all, sand casting, where did you learn it from? Cause it's kind of unique. Well, I can say I learned it from high school. When I was in school, we actually made gear shift knobs that looked like skulls, you know, made lots of little aluminum things in school, but I don't think many schools do that anymore. So that's why this might be a little bit interesting. And the other source that I had was, I had a great uncle. This is when I was very young it was my dad's uncle and he was eccentric and ultra smart but not educated smart and, and this is something that he made he spent a long time on this i don't have any idea what it is i remember seeing it when i was a kid it ended up he died alone and basically his estate went into the court and it stayed there for 20 plus years and his trailer house rotted down and his machines rotted down and I found this in the yard some years later cleaned it up but he he made all these gears he made an attachment on the back of his lathe to cut and hob gears he casted all these castings the same way we're going to in fact with one of the old pieces that I've still used so this was interestingly enough I don't know what it's supposed to be but when I was young, I remember spinning that gear and all of them would spin. It kind of froze up and rusted now, but it's a big transmission is what it amounts to, but we got a, a free floating gear here. I don't know what it's for, but it's pretty cool just to be able to accomplish that. So I learned a little bit from him, the little bit that I was around him. And I kind of like to believe that if somebody can do it, I can do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to do it, even if it's not right. <laughs> You'll at least see how kind of how to do it. You might you might make an engine block someday <laughs> So about 15 years ago dad started getting pebble pulp and chef together 392 Hemi parts aren't necessarily readily available. So broke out sand casting once again This was one of the first pieces you made since you said high school. So <laughs> Explain this is just a spare. I don't know. I made half a dozen of them or something while I was making them It was easy but that's a, a timing cover that I made for this thing back, like I say, 15 years or so ago. You can see there's one on there, a fuel pump can bolt to the front of it, but it works perfect. I made this one as a spare. Like I said, I gave several of them away, but it's not too bad. You can see the, I mean, it's dirty. It's been sitting around here, but the, the casting is not real porous. You know, I sanded it up a little bit here. But when it's real porous, when it's a bad casting, this one's got a little bit in it. That's probably why I didn't use it, but it's not bad. I've seen a lot worse. Yeah, so um, basically breaking out the, the sand casting and the aluminum that you're gonna be melting was probably last melted uh, when you made those. Probably 15 years ago when I made these. Okay, so rather than making an actual mold, taking the time to do that, he's just gonna use one of his dies that he already has. I'm gonna fill those holes up there so I can pack sand around it. Once I'm finished with this, I'll drill that out of those holes and turn that back into a die. But for the time being, I can put tape over it, but the sand will push the tape in, make indentions, and then when I pull that up out of the sand, it'll tear the sides of the sand mold up. So I'm just gonna temporarily fill those holes with Bondo. Start and smooth it out, and we'll have a good smooth die. This looks like it could be a mess. <laughs> okay, all bondoed up, pretty smooth. Specs yep. I'd look like. 
we'll sand that once it's still sticky. I just broke it off of the glass, so the backside's already pretty good shape. Once that dries, we'll smooth it up just enough. I just want to be able to pull this out of the sand without the sand being pushed in these holes and tearing the sand up as I come out. So that needs to be smooth. Looks like it's all ready to go now. Got it sanded, got all the extra bondo off. That should be nice and smooth. So for the sand that you use, you have to wet it, but you want it where it's wet enough that it compacts, but not wet enough that it like sticks to your skin or sticks to the part and start the mold that you're using. So looks like we're making sand castles, but I got it a little too wet when he was mixing it earlier, so he's getting ready to dry it out with a torch. But right now, it just looks like a mess. But it's necessary. Some toasty sand. Much dried out, more dried out than it was. So. Okay, we're over the top. I want this to be pretty close to the top of the box. Stop right there, pack it in. is this die is horseshoed in so we got to have it like this in order to pull it out it has to have draft not negative draft so as I pull up it's just going to break the ends what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it back and forth and see if we can push this out compact it to the outside and be a little bit careful with it This is an inch and an eighth. It's smaller than what I actually need. I'll have to finish this surface. I'll probably just hand sand it because I'm only going to be using maybe, you know, three or four inches of that curve. I'm just going to hand sand it with a little belt sander, open it up to a little piece of inch and a quarter tubing fits in there nice. And then the, sh the aluminum will shrink. You know, there's a 10% or something shrink factor with melted aluminum. When it cools off, it'll shrink. So everything's gonna change size anyway. I'm not casting a piano. It doesn't matter <laughs> that much. You know, it's just a just a quick die. Okay, so I got the edges cleaned up. Just used a sheet of metal, packed it, or held it up to the side and packed a little bit of sand uh, to get it all cleaned up. But now that is all ready to go. So going to melt the metal now. Um, so that way we can pour it pretty soon. to pour. Ooh, 
that's toasty. I can feel the heat. It kind of overflowed. So it just dumped the sand bucket over, the bucket of sand, and uh, broke the piece out. So it's too hot for me to touch, and I'm videoing if you come over here and flip it. It doesn't look too bad. Pretty good. Just needs some finishing work on it, which he's going to do anyways, but that's, that's it coming out of the sand. Fresh out. You want to flip it? I want to go cool it so it'll temper it a little bit. Ooh. Gonna straighten it up a little bit, widen it up just a little bit. I haven't even tried it yet. Let me get a piece of tubing now. So this is the before, and then this is the mid process of him cleaning it up. So gonna get it cleaned up, straightened up, like you said, widen it out just a little bit. But I think it's gonna clean up nice. It's gonna be a nice piece for the limited amount it's gonna be used. So earlier in the video, definitely mentioned that the whole point of doing this was to one, have the dye quick, and two, it can be done like it is because it's literally just going to be for just a couple bins. It's not going to be used a lot. He doesn't use that very often, that size. So anyways, so we're going to use this bender, but not going to now. going to actually use the one over there that's hard to do. So anyways, the reason for the switch is because if he was to use this bender over here, he'd have to make a shoe that is like this. So you'd have to have these two pieces and then this chunk bolted onto it. it takes more time. So instead, he's just using the CNC and I'll show you the shoes that he's making that'll be receiving for this so we can use it over there. So this way, all he has to do is just cut a couple grooves, be super easy and that way we can call it done and that way he can just go back to working on the chassis that he needs to work on. So got the casting part done. He's going to clean that up to either tonight or tomorrow morning and then the other part will be done and then make his couple bins and then on to the next. As I said, just making two grooves. That's all he's doing. So happen to have a bit that is actually an inch and a quarter. So that's so hard to see. Just drilling down and making the groove. Whereas the other would have taken more time. For reference, just so you know what I'm talking about more, so I'm not, I don't know if my rambling's making sense. This is the die that we would have had to make, or not the die, the shoe. So the other side with the two pieces and this part bolted on, would have to do, drill a lot of holes in that chunk that is over there that we cast. Here though, is basically what he's doing over there with that awful noise. <laughs> So this is what he's doing over there. Um, he's just making one that's the right size. So an inch and a quarter. So so much easier. It's just a block a lot quicker. So that is what it'll look like when it's done as opposed to this. So if it was something we're doing using more often, I mean, this would be reasonable to do, but right now it's just taking more time on, ah! <laughs> it's taking more time on something that could just be done. So came in this morning, he got them all finished up. He's got them out now so I can show you and then gonna do a bit. So, say it's pretty successful. Let's see it. That's the piece we cast. I just sanded it with a, the little hand belt sander. Sanded that side and smoothed that side off. So that one seems to be good. That bolt in there. These are just a couple blocks of billet that I machined all four sides, or actually six sides to match the thickness of that machine to groove in it so they're ready to go so time to make a bend this is just a test bend um, this isn't the actual part that's going to go in the chassis but that's about all the bend we'll put in so you're telling me you made all that die for that <laughs> That's good. Work. That's all I need, just a little bend. So success. Really, it's actually gonna be used for more than just that. This chassis is, you've got two bends like that. Two tiny bends, but 
We're actually going to be adding a couple bars to the cage in my car pretty soon. Like, same size. Same, same size. Car. So, it'll actually be used again. That he needs. I can't show the chassis that it's going in. That'll be for a later date. But, this is the actual bin. It's a guess at this point. And there is the final products all together. So you saw the bins they made. That's the pieces to make them. So that's what we cast yesterday. Turned out nice. Did its job for the limited amount it's going to be used. And then the draws. So job well done. Okay, and that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, be happy, go fast, and stay pretty. I will see you guys next time.